Welcome to Michigan in the winter. And this winter is something special. We've gotten more snow this year than we have in probably the last three or four years. Michigan winters are cold and bleak. Generally the snow is accompanied by high winds, so it's bitterly cold. And as a Texan, I have to be honest when I say I'm just not winter's biggest fan. That being said, the still that accompanies a new snowfall is really something to behold and I've really developed an appreciation for it over time. That doesn't mean I want to be outside all the time, but I can definitely appreciate the beauty that comes along with having a nice snow. For construction, that's entirely different. Michigan pretty much shuts down when it comes to construction things over the winter. Yeah, you can drive around and find some small guys still sticking at it, but for the most part, all of the good projects are at a standstill. And that meant I was going to have to think outside the box to keep the channel going over the winter time. I was most likely going to have to drive south. But the question was, where can we go? Where would I go that I wouldn't just be aimlessly driving around looking for construction projects? So I did what any normal person would do. I took to the internet and started asking. One of my favorite machines in the industry are track loaders. I've never had the opportunity to run one and the Cat 963 is just an absolute monster. It's like you combine a dozer and a loader, throw them together and then give them a shitload of horsepower. They're just amazing machines. So I was watching some YouTube videos one day and I got into a debate with a guy about whether it was faster to dig a basement with a track loader versus an excavator. I made the comment, I guess I just need to come run one and see, and he actually volunteered to let me come run one of his track loaders. So after a few back and forth messages via Facebook Messenger, I booked a trip to Kentucky. For the first time in my career, I was finally going to get to run a Cat 963, and I couldn't have been more excited. Hello, is this Hey man, what's going on? It's Brian with Diesel and Iron. How are you? You guys are good with me coming down and run our track loader. Let's talk through some of the details and what that actually looks like. Okay, sometime in February. Do that, let's plan kind of early to mid-February and uh, I'll book hotel rooms and and yeah, let's, let's put it together. All right, man, looking forward to it. Awesome, thanks. Looks like we're going to Kentucky. That's awesome, that's awesome. It's Brian uh, with Diesel Iron. Just wanted to check in with you and see if we're still on for next week. Uh, if anything changed, let me know so I can cancel any, you know, hotel reservations or anything like that. So, hope to talk to you soon. Hey, it's Brian with Diesel and Iron. Left a voicemail uh, yesterday. Hadn't heard back from you. Just wanted to touch base again. Uh, let me know if anything's changed. Uh, but I did want to touch base with you and at least kind of sort out what we were going to do while we were down there. So, uh, give me a shout back. My number's... Yeah, in case you hadn't figured it out, the guy stopped answering his phone. He didn't even return Facebook messages. He just totally ghosted me. I was in a pinch. We were four days out from the trip. See, the really thing that you guys don't understand, just a peek behind the scenes is, uh, when Michigan shut down for construction, that means I'm getting light on content. And so I was really depending on this trip to get me through the next like month and a half without any construction work around here. So the fact that this guy's backing out is a pretty big blow to what I had planned. So I've got to come up with another plan. Hi, this is Brian with Diesel and Iron. Hi, this is Brian with Diesel and Iron. Hi, this is Brian with Diesel and Iron. I have a YouTube channel that focuses on getting guys into the trade. So I went into overdrive mode. I literally spent the Friday before we left calling every company in the area asking if by some miraculous chance they would let me come hang out for the day and possibly run one of their machines. And run a piece of equipment. Uh, I was just gonna see if there was any possibility that I could come out and 
do some filming, possibly run a piece of equipment. Yeah, the guy bailed on me, and so I'm scrambling to find someone to let me run a machine. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Bye. Yeah, no, I really appreciate you at least hearing me out. Uh, I, I get it. I figured that was probably going to be the case, but I'd rather ask and, and get the no. So, yep, I hope you have a good day, too. Bye. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, I totally understand. All right, have a good day. Bye. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Yes. All right, you have a nice day, too. All right, bye-bye. Yep, yep, I appreciate it. Bye, and bye. And that was that. We had hotel rooms booked. We had flights booked. My parents were coming into town to hang out with the kids and my wife while I was supposedly going to work. We had no option to not go. So we set off in the car without a plan. when I hit my next hurdle. The further south we got, the further it was obvious that there wasn't going to be any equipment running because Kentucky had been getting the same sorts of snowfall that we had been experiencing up north. Everything was parked. pretty bummed about the situation, but seeing Louisville at night was actually pretty spectacular and it was really awesome getting to shoot a cityscape with my nice camera. This is one of the first opportunities I've had to do this since owning my nice camera gear, so I figured I might as well make the best of it. Spending a fair amount of time sulking, I finally decided to just blow off the trip altogether. This wasn't about getting footage at this point, it was purely about spending some time with my parents, with my family, in Louisville. I mean, they're known for bourbon, right? So surely we can salvage this trip. So we decided we were going to do some sightseeing. And that's when we got hit with yet another hurdle on this trip. It just keeps getting better. In fact, winter storm watches kicked off across much of the viewing area. We're hustling around, trying to prepare for what could be the worst. Bottom line, it's going to be a very active next seven to 10 days. Another winter storm will be a possibility. This is going to be the main batch of wintry weather that'll slip through here. Winter storm watch posted. Snow continues yeah, to Yeah, that's right. A huge winter storm was moving through. Are expected. Yes, weather was reporting weather. anywhere it's from three to six inches of snow over the course of about 24 hours hours. Hour and a half or so. We literally had 24 hours before it hit once we arrived in Louisville. So all of our sightseeing was pretty much thrown out the window. We had one day to fit in whatever we could. A winter storm warning in effect top to bottom around the viewing area. So guys to say the least it's gonna be busy. So with all things considered we decided to settle on this place the mega caverns of Louisville. It turns out these aren't caverns at all. It's actually a huge underground limestone mine. Back in the 50s and 60s, you could mine without owning the land above. So these guys were able to mine huge amounts of limestone while only owning the entrance to the mine. But that wasn't even the most interesting part to me. The most interesting thing was these guys store the entire state of Kentucky's road salt. And I needed to get a behind the scenes tour. So I did what anyone would do in my position. I hit the phones. I run a YouTube channel that focuses on the skilled trade. And I tried talking to the mine first, but they told me that I needed to get a hold of the city because they just stored the salt and the city was the one responsible for the operation and they own the equipment. So I called over to the city and talked to a couple people and they told me that I needed to talk to the mine because they were the ones who owned the property. After getting passed back and forth a few times, I finally just had to accept defeat. It wasn't going to happen this trip. 
It's not looking good, guys. So I just had something kind of interesting happen. Uh, as you can see, got all bundled up, got the family put to bed. My parents are coming in later, so I figured, well, why not go out and shoot? And that will give me a good excuse to stay up. It'll keep me occupied. So I got my camera, got all bundled up, went outside, and the street is blocked off in front of the Airbnb both ways by three cop cars. And there are two officers with flashlights looking on the ground. And I pretty much knew what was happening. But I walked over and asked him, I said, uh, hey, I'm assuming you guys aren't looking for a contact lens. And one of them said, nope, we just had an active shooting here. And I'm literally talking like 60 feet from the door to our Airbnb. So there goes my entire plan for salvaging this trip. I was going to try to go out in the evenings and overnight and get some footage of the plow trucks cleaning up the city streets. But I'm not about to go get myself shot for YouTube. I'm sorry, you guys, I do what I can, but just not worth it, I guess. So, back to the drawing board on what we're going to do for getting some footage here. So, I'm going to go change out of these clothes. I'm going to head back upstairs and try to reformulate a game plan. So, I guess we'll catch you guys later. Then, when I thought things couldn't sink any further, I got the final blow of the trip. Well guys, I think we can officially call this trip a bus, and I can officially say I'm not Louisville's biggest fan. So we drove around today, found a couple backhoes pushing snow, and right about the time I was going to get out of the car to start recording, I started feeling pretty bad. So I'm now in bed with chills, nausea, the full, the full deal. It's, it's official, I'm definitely sick, so... This trip has been an absolute bust, and I'm sorry. But I'm also more disappointed than you guys are, so I don't feel that bad. So we're going to shut this down. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next video at some point when I feel like a human being again. And hopefully some work fires back up. So we'll catch you guys on the next one.